let's take this wig and turn it into this new beauty. Let's go ahead and get started. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Sugar Kaylin, aka KP. And today I'm going to be showing you guys how I revamp my wigs and make them on the sewing machine. So this wig right here is my friend's. Um, it was constructed by someone else. And um, it was just a little bit too small for her head. So she wanted to, you know, make it a little bit bigger and replace the frontal for a closure. So this is just up close of what the closure looked like. And yeah, so I'm just going to be showing you guys what I do to make my wigs on the sewing machine. So some things that you would need to create a wig. I'm using the extra large mesh dome cap, measuring tape, and a Sharpie for your guidelines. And of course, your sewing machine. And I also use um, actual needle and thread to sew down a closure. So also keep that in mind. So this is just what the extra large dome cap looks like. Um, the two lines I'm putting in the front and then the V part I'm putting in the back. That's just how I line mine up. This is my canvas head. I got it from Amazon. I'll link in the description bar below. This size is a 23.5. Um, it is very key that you know your head measurements or your client's measurements when making a wig because all canvas heads are not made equally. Um, as you can tell, this canvas head it comes out more. Rather than if you're like a size 21 or a size 22, it's a little bit more flatter. Um, so definitely keep your measurements in mind. I put a picture on the screen so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. I swear it's time to keep these feelings to myself. Now you're the one so here I'm just measuring up, making sure everything sits well. So we're gonna be stretching out the nape. Um, to come down a little bit more because typically with a size 23.5 canvas head um, The measurements from like front to nape is like a 15 to like 15.5 um, so Yes, but I didn't show you guys me measuring that because I kind of already know exactly where it should sit But in order to get that you just literally line up your measuring tape like stick it to where the front of the dome cap starts and just measure all the way to the back and just stretch it until you get to your designated front to nape measurement. I'm just repositioning everything to make sure everything kind of sits where it needs to sit. And as you can tell, we have extra fabric in the back. So we're gonna be sewing that to make sure everything is seam seamless. So we are going to be taking um, that extra bulkiness out and I'm just going to be pinning um, exactly where I want it to lay. Just basically overlapping the dumb cap um, as you can tell, kind of like tucking it a little bit but also making sure it is flat. If I did that to one side, I'm going to be also doing it to the other. And this step is vital because if you don't remove it, it's just going to create these lumps in your wigs. And you do not want that. It's not going to sit well on your head. So try to get, you know, everything flat and seamless as possible. So this is where the needle and thread is going to come into play. And I am just going to be sewing exactly where I... Um, overlapped everything and I did double knot it honestly you don't need to um, only basically when you start and when you finish it's a habit that I have created from when I used to make my wigs on um, by hand so you don't have to double knot it every single time you sew just basically when you start and when you finish just to make sure everything is locked in
time to keep these feelings to myself. Now you're the one I'm thinking of. So once I get to the top, I'm actually going to be cutting a little piece off and double knotting it again just to make sure everything um, is in place and doesn't come loose. I want to say if your mesh dome cap does not have any extra bulkiness, do not do this. If it's already sitting flat to the camera's head, do not do this, okay? You don't have to. Um, yeah, you don't have to. So do not do this stuff. If your camera's head already looks flat, as soon as you put it to where like your measurements are, do not do this stuff. I repeat, do not do this stuff. <laughs> look how flat that looks it already looks like it's sitting well on her on this canvas head so it's not you know too tight either it still has some you know breathable room and stretchiness to it so that is good but it's still laying flat okay so now we're applying the closure um one key thing that i use when applying the closure is you don't want it to be sitting so far back so what i use is basically the edge of the closure to determine where it needs to sit so the edge where it starts where i just put that pin at where the hairline starts that's where you need to pin at you don't want to push it too far back i typically push my closures up about like a half an inch away from like where the actual dome cap starts just to make sure it's not too far back and like everything doesn't sit well so everything is nice and flat This is where your measuring tape and Sharpie comes into play. So I'm starting at number one and I am putting that directly in the middle and pinning down where it stops. So to create our guidelines, I'm doing mine an uh, inch apart. So I started off at one and I'm going to every number. And I think my last one was at 10. Um, yeah, it was at 10. So I'm doing that to both sides just to kind of make sure everything is straight. Um, and then I'm connecting it in the middle and then we're going to be creating our guidelines across so just stretching those out across I did mine an inch because I didn't want my tracks I didn't want my um wefts to sit so close together because you want to be able to have some stretch to it um so an inch is typically what most wig makers do now if you're triple wefting which is a little bit more advanced or double uh triple or quadruple wefting um you can get away with going a little bit further apart so i'm just making my guidelines and i did also outline around the closure um because yeah I'm also going to be putting a track there as well, just to make sure everything is seamless. So these are my guidelines and they are a little crooked, but that is okay. And that is my business because the wig came out perfectly anyway. So we are going to be sewing down the closure. I did half of it so you guys can see. Now I do sew my closures on with my hand, like hand sewn it. Um, I don't know. I kind of just like to see everything visibly done. So you can do this without sewing down the closure first with your um, with a needle and thread. You can do it on the sewing machine, but I feel like for begin beginners, this is kind of like the easier way, so you can kind of see everything. So again, I am just double knotting. You don't have to double knot because you're 
I am going to be going around um, with a sewing machine around this part. But like I said, it's just a habit that I created when, um, when I used to do wigs by my hand. Y'all don't mind my bonnet, y'all. It was late. <laughs> So this is what it should look like. You should have some extra room in between your closure and your mesh tone cap. Don't worry, we're gonna cut that extra piece off. Now it's time to sew on the sewing machine. Of course, you're gonna need your thread and your bobbins. I'll link this um, bobbin set that I got. This is, y'all, I love this so much. I can thread as many bobbins as I want. Sometimes when I make wigs, I sew about two a piece just to make sure I don't have to stop in the middle of what I'm doing and have to read through my bottom because it's such a pain. Um, but here, I'm just showing you how I'm threading it. So I'm not really good at explaining this part because every sewing machine is different. Um, but I'm just sewing my bobbin here and locking it into place so it doesn't fly off. And I'm going to be threading my bobbin. Now, one thing I didn't do, I didn't do it up close and personal how the um, settings that I use for my machine, but I did use the zigzag motion. As you can tell at the bottom where that S is, that red S, I did use a zigzag motion and the button above it, as far as the length, I use the number three and then up the button right above that where the bobbin is kind of like diagonal from the bobbin for the how far away I want my zigzags to come. That was a number five. And as far as the tension right there above the reverse button, I use a four. I'll put it all in the description box, box below. My apologies for not explaining, like having a more in depth of that. The cool thing about Singer, it, it gives you numbers exactly to show you where you need to thread, um, how the thread goes in order to get to your needle. So now we're going to be taking our closure and this is where I am going to be reinforcing around where I hand sewn. So we want to put our footer down and we just want to stitch. Now, when I first start, I am back stitching about three times. And um, I'm just, after the third time, I'm just gonna go all the way through once. Now, sometimes with the closure, you do have to like move the hair out of the way. So, I also see people um, practice on paper. So, if you want to create different lines, like a circle, so you can get the gist of like, moving everything around um, i'm pretty sure they have it on google or you can make your own just you know put some lines and create a circle so you can practice on paper so this is what it should look like um we are actually going to be cutting the extra thread off here and i'm actually going ahead and cutting off that extra piece um to the back of the closure so i don't have to later I just love the way whenever a wig is constructed on the sewing machine, how it looks. It just looks so, I don't know, just neatly done. So this is basically what it looks like. Um, very neat, very seamless. So um, I did have to add an extra bundle into this wig. So you're going to take one end and connect it to the other. And you're just going to sew those together. Um, I did a backstitch about two times. And then I'm just continuing to continuing to sew. Um, you want to make sure the needle is actually going through the weft itself. So you'll see me kind of like pushing it together and like positioning the hair. It look like that. You see the zigzag 
motion. But yeah, very neat, very seamless. I'm gonna be taking my track, my web, and I'm placing it where my guideline is, basically on top of it. Um, I am gonna be back stitching about three times just to reinforce it, but you, literally you're just following those guidelines. So it's okay if you need to stop, reposition, twist a little bit. It is okay, I have to do that all the time. Um, so yeah, you're literally gonna be following your guidelines, placing it right on top of the, the line. And I do cut my, my webs. Um, it is okay to cut your webs. Um, whenever I learn how to do it, um, like the flip method, I'll show you guys. But yeah, so that's basically what it looks like. So basically, this is a uh, repeat of everything. So once you get done cutting one line, and you start at the beginning of the next line. Now, when doing this, do not stretch out your cap. I'm simply just making sure everything is flat. I'm not pulling, I'm not doing any of that because that will cause for your tracks not to lay flat. This is what it looks like from the inside. Nice and seamless. So you wanna repeat this all the way until you know you get to the top. Um, unfortunately, since the wig was already made, um, and it wasn't like fresh webs. Um, I did have to do like a lot of like piecing together, which is fine. I'll show you guys how to piece together your tracks. What I mean by piecing is the track doesn't make it all the way to the end, like in this clip. So I had one track that kind of stopped midway and I sewed it all the way to the very end. And I'm gonna be taking my other track, placing it where I stopped and I'm just going to be sewing it like normal and I do back stitch just to make sure it's not like too loose because this is a new track so again you just want to line it up where you stopped off at and just continue as normal again you can practice on those pieces of paper like take some old like cheap webs and just practice um, on the piece of paper So this is what it looks like um, with me connecting two us together. You can't even tell that there's two there. So again, I'm taking, just gonna repeat this throughout the whole head. So this is another one that the web was too short for you know it to go straight across. So again, you're gonna connect it to where you stopped at with your new web and back stitch just a little bit and continue as normal. This is the very last track. This is gonna connect to the closure. This is gonna make sure everything is seamless, y'all. And it's literally, you're gonna be doing the same exact thing on how you do the rest of the, the tracks. Now, of course, you're gonna to have to do a little bit more um, twisting because it's not a straight line, it's a U-line. So you are gonna do a little bit of twisting, but that is okay. You just wanna make sure everything is flat. This is the end result on how I make my wigs. As you can tell from the closure to the last track around, it is very flat. 
Um, but yeah, it's really nothing to it. You just want to style it. And this is what the inside construction looks like. Very neat, very seamless. All right, guys, so that's basically it. Um, this is what it looks like on my friend's head. Super cute. She said it fit her head perfectly. Um, so yeah, I will be having a part two of um, my wig making series, I guess you can call it that. Um, basically just um, me doing the customization, plucking, curling, things of that nature. So yeah, definitely hit that subscribe button guys. And don't forget to turn on that post notification bell to be notified when I upload a new video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you guys learned something um, about making wigs. Um, I will talk to you guys on the next video. Peace. Listen.